talked about the heart, we've talked about the blood vessels. And so now we're going to talk about the stuff that's going through. What is the heart pumping? The blood. Now, if you remember, blood is actually a type of connective tissue. Remember that you had um, connective tissue proper, you had supportive connective tissue, and you had fluid connective tissue. So, since you are a multicellular organism with trillions and trillions of cells, then you've got to basically take oxygen and nutrients to the cells and pick up the waste materials from the cells. Okay, now, you have the fluid that is inside the bloodstream, inside the blood vessels. You have the fluid that is between the cells, and then you have the fluid inside of the cells, right? So we have intracellular fluid, right? And then everything else is extracellular fluid, right? Yep, because it's outside of cells. Now, the, the fluid that is in between, basically, the blood vessels and the cells is the interstitial or tissue fluid. And then the fluid portion of the blood is the plasma. So the point of this is that any, <clears throat> any kind of chemical changes that are happening in here affect the chemicals that are in the interstitial fluid, which affects the chemicals in the bloodstream. And that's why most of the time we don't have to biopsy tissues. We can just draw blood because that will tell us a lot about what's going on inside our cells. Does that make sense? It's all in a big equilibrium. Yeah. All right. Now, what does blood do? Well, we know blood transports substances. We already, we've already talked about the fact that blood drops off carbon dioxide and picks up, drops off carbon dioxide, you know, but actually it does not love. It uh, drops off oxygen to your tissues and picks up carbon dioxide. It also transports glucose, fatty acids, vitamins. It also transports hormones. Um, we've talked about um, adrenaline or epinephrine. Uh, we've talked about parathyroid hormone in the past calcitonin, the thyroid hormones, insulin, glucagon, all those hormones are released from the various endocrine organs and have to be transported in the blood. And of course, the metabolic waste, things that your cells produce as they break down materials. Urea is produced from the breakdown of amino acids. Uric acid is produced from the breakdown of nucleic acids. And so cells are constantly breaking stuff down and building stuff up, so they produce waste, they produce waste products. Okay, um, back to good old pH. The blood is very important in regulating not only the pH, what's blood pH from? So, and we'll talk about exactly how that happens a little bit later, but also it helps regulate the electrolytes, the sodium ions, the potassium ions, the calcium ions. Now, one of the things we'll talk about probably Thursday next week is the fact that the blood clots if you cut a blood vessel. So you have clotting factors. These are proteins. Most of these proteins are made by the liver and release them to the bloodstream. And they're there. They're in an inactive form just in case you cut yourself. And then they get activated and form a clot. We'll talk about how that works, like I said, probably Thursday. Another thing that the blood's involved in is in defense. Part of your, uh, many of your immune cells, not all of them, but many of your immune, much of your immunity is present in the bloodstream. The white blood cells, these are basically different types of cells that fight different types of infections, and we'll talk briefly about each one of those. Uh, there's a particular type of uh, white blood cell that makes antibodies. This is another protein, or, or a group of proteins that are found in the plasma, but these are not made in the liver. Most of the blood protein is made in the liver. Antibodies are not. Antibodies are made by cells called plasma cells that are in your bone marrow or lymph nodes. We'll talk about that later. And then, of course, we know that um, if you get hot, you begin to sweat, your blood vessels dilate so that blood can take heat from the internal organs, from your skeletal muscles, and send it out to the skin so you can radiate, radiate that. If it's cold outside, then blood is shut into your internal organs so that they don't freeze and you, you, know, you may lose a toe or a nose or an ear, but <laughs> you haven't lost a brain or a heart. 
Blood is actually thicker than water. And again, God rest his soul is right. If I ask you what your normal body temperature is, what would you tell me? Yeah, that's because that's sticking it under your tongue. 97.4. 90. Oh, the jurors. Yeah. Yeah. If you ask me mine, that's what I'm counting. Yeah. But the, the blood itself is actually a little bit warmer. All right. And of course, we know about the pH. And of course, guys on average have a little bit more blood than females just because on average they tend to be um, a little bit larger. Yeah. Exactly. Now, if you take blood out <coughs> and you let it either you put it under centrifuge and spin it down or you let it just sit there for a day and let it separate. You have basically two things. One has the fluid compulsion, which is the plasma, and the formed elements. Now, the reason they use the term formed elements instead of cells is because one of the things that's in the blood is not cells. You have the white blood cells, otherwise known as leukocytes, Leuco meaning white. You have the red blood cells, erythrocytes. And then you have the platelets. A platelet is not a cell, it is a fragment, a cell fragment. So that's why that the term is used, the term form elements is used as opposed to just saying the liquid and the cells because they're not really cells, they're pieces of cells. However, they're called thrombocytes, but that's really a bad term because site usually means cell. Now, normally you should have a little bit more of plasma than you do form elements. If you end up with, like in a male, their hematocrit, the percentage of uh, their blood that is red blood cells can get above 50. But you, you don't want it, if it gets much higher than that, the blood's too thick. We talked about the viscosity of the blood and it decreases blood flow. So you don't want that, you don't want to have too much formed elements in your bloodstream. So if you take the, the happy medium here, <laughs> about 55% of the blood should be liquid, should be plasma, and about 45% should be the rest of this. The plasma is 92% water. Of the 8% of the stuff that's left, about 7% of that is protein. So you've got 92% water and then a bunch of protein. And then 1 to 2%, because well, I mean, that's 9, I realize that. These are average numbers. You've got all of these other things dissolved in that other 1 to 2%. So mostly water, and then of the solids, most of the solids are protein. If we think about glucose, you normally have about, oh, I don't know, let's say 100 milligrams per deciliter of glucose in your blood, unless you're just eating somewhere between 70 to 120, something like that. You normally have about, um, let's say, on average, 7 grams of protein per deciliter. So 7,000 milligrams per deciliter of protein in the blood. See how much more protein than you have than other stuff? So the big differences between the plasma, oh, this is my book. The big difference is between the plasma, which is here, and the interstitial fluid that's here, is basically the protein. Lots and lots of protein in the plasma, not so much, very little protein in the interstitial fluid. All right, so since we're talking about the plasma proteins, as I said, most of the proteins that are in the plasma are synthesized by the liver. And, and of all that protein that's in there, the largest amount of that, over half of that, is something called albumin. Lots and lots and lots and lots of albumin. Then you have a whole nother category of proteins called globulins. And they call them globulins because their three-dimensional shape is kind of like a glob. They're kind of just rounded up ball-like proteins over here. So that, and that's, there's like, oh geez, probably three, four hundred different kinds of those. And then you have a very, this last protein, fibrinogen. This is the protein that's used to make fiber clots. That's one of those clotting factors, huh? Yeah, when you cut a blood vessel, 
Fibrinogen gets converted to fiber. Fibrinogen, remember we talked about ogen means a precursor, like angiotensin ogen. It's converted to angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2. Okay, so fibrinogen, you're going to see this a lot when we talk about the clotting proteins. Fibrinogen is a precursor. It's dissolved in the plasma. And when the clotting uh, cascades are activated, fibrinogen gets converted to fiber. Basically, a piece of this is cut off, and then the fibrin actually precipitates out of solution. It becomes insoluble and forms a fibrin, a protein clot. Now, a lot of times you'll see the term, we've been using the term plasma, you'll, you'll hear the term serum. Well, what is the difference? A lot of people will use them interchangeably. There's actually an important difference between serum and plasma. In your bloodstream, unless something really weird is going on, your blood is not clotting. So the liquid portion of blood is called plasma. If you take, if you draw blood, you just draw it into a plain glass tube, that blood will clot. Because what happens is when you take that needle and you uh, push it through the wall of the blood vessel, you've started the clotting cascade. Because you've essentially cut that blood vessel. You've activated the clotting factors. And so that blood that goes into that tube will clot. So it will form a clot. And so what happens is all of those clotting factors are no longer in the liquid portion. They're down here around all the red cells and the white cells. Does that make sense? So the portion of the liquid portion of blood from blood that's been clotted is called serum. If the blood clots, the clotting factors are down here. They're no longer up here. That's called serum. Now, if you want to look at, if you're drawing blood and you want to look at the red cells or you want to make a blood smear or whatever, you have to put in an anticoagulant. You have to put something in that tube to prevent it from clotting. Mm -hmm. If you notice, if you've ever noticed when they draw blood, they'll draw like a, uh, the tube will have a purple top on it or a blue top on it or a red top on it or a yellow top on it. The ones that have red and yellow, those do not have any anticoagulants in there. So those blood, that blood clots. But the, the purple tubes, the, the green top tubes, the light blue tubes, the dark blue tubes, those all have different chemicals to prevent clotting. And so if you take the liquid portion out of those tubes, it's plasma. It's just like the plasma in your bloodstream because the blood is not clotting. If you're trying to test somebody's clotting ability, you usually draw uh, something, it's called a, a sodium citrate tube, a light blue cap tube, a light blue stopper. And that's why I put that up there. <laughs> and what happens is the blood doesn't clot, so the clotting factors are all there. So plasma contains clotting factors because the blood has not clotted. The clotting factors have not been used up. Serum does not. Serum comes from blood that's clotted. The clotting factors are no longer here. They're down here in the clot. You've got this whole group of different kind of proteins, um, and they do all kinds of stuff. Some of them are transport proteins. Iron. Anybody got hard water? You got iron? You've seen? You've never seen that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 like a yeah. well. Yeah, and like the inside of your dishwasher turns kind of pinkish. Okay. Iron is not very water soluble. So you actually have to have proteins, things like um, transparent. It is a globulin. And its job is to transport iron. You have lipoproteins. Uh, we talk, remember we talked about HDL and LDL and VLDL? And I, yeah, okay, those are lipoproteins. So they're carrying lipids because lipids are not water soluble. Um, certain hormones are not very water soluble. They have to have proteins to transport them. Then you have this called separate categories of globulin called antibodies or immunoglobulins. They're called gamma globulins. So gamma globulins, antibodies, Immunoglobulins, all the same freaking thing. Okay? <laughs> These are not produced by blood. They're produced by something called plasma cells, which is a type of white blood cell we'll talk about later. So when you're given a vaccine against hepatitis B, you make an antibody that would attack that virus. Again, it's not the liver that does that, it's your immune system that does that. But they are globular proteins, so they fall under this category of globular.